Hello YouTubers, I'm reviewing another NECA figure today and it is juicing from Friday the 13th, the final chapter, aka Friday the 13th part 4 and you can see we've got the same sort of movie poster that they do with most of the NECA uh, figures in the Ultimate versions. We've also got a picture of Jason on the side of the box, again seeing the final chapter and NECA with Real Toys logo on there. Same on the other side, unfortunately, a little bit of bashing on the box. Ah! Same information on the top. With uh, credits on the bottom, or basic credits of the figure and the sculpting. Uh, more information there. And on the back, we've got some pictures of the figure in various poses. And we've also got a little bit more information uh, about the final chapter on the back of the box. Again, just like all the Ultimate NECA figures, it's got a little piece of Velcro to keep the door shut. Again, nice picture of the figure, and it does display the figure quite nicely with all of its accessories. But anyway, without further ado, let's get this figure out of its box and review it, shall we? Okay, so here is the figure itself, and just like all NECA figures, it looks absolutely excellent. So yeah, this is Jason from part four so he's not quite as uh beaten up and battered as he would become later on in parks uh, six seven and onwards but he is still seeing a few bits of better days so we'll start off with the head shall we so this is one of the uh two heads that comes with the figure you can see that the hockey mask here is being dirtied quite a bit compared to previous ones so it, they have dirtied it up and uh, also, I don't know what you call the little red bits on there. Names, tip of my tongue. Um, my brother's actually, do you know what they're called? I'm not going to be No. But uh, you can see that the two there are really, really faded. With just a bit of the red on the top, so they've kept that detail. But also, the obvious crack here in the mask where obviously Jason's machete would there lie. Now the mask is removable, so let's actually take a look at just the mask on its own. So the mask on its own looks really good. You can see all the detailing even on the underside, which is nice. But also we've got the little straps going around the head just there. You can see the little buckles, which have all been nicely detailed and painted. But anyway, the real detail lies underneath. So, this is Jason's more mangled head. So, this is pretty much him at the very, very end of the film, where his head slides down his own machete. And you can see, there's a little gap there. Why is the reason for that? Is so you can redo the pose, and uh probably show you that later on. But, again, the head looks absolutely excellent making Jason look more zombified than anything else by this point you can see also the blood gushing out to the side of the head there looking excellent his neck actually looks really clean in comparison we can see that the back of the head as well I don't know if it's supposed to be veins on the back of his head or just you know wrinkles and decay but he does look really zombified especially by this point Works obviously he would look a lot more zombified later on. But yeah, you can see his flesh is deteriorating, his jaw sort of hanging wide open and he only has the use of one eye. In terms of the neck, the neck looks remarkably clean actually in comparison to the head. Now when you have the hockey mask on, this doesn't really cause much of a concern apart from when you see it around the back there. You can see that the pinks don't quite match, which is a bit of, Maybe they should have put a little bit of dirt on there because it does make it look a bit more obvious. As for the shirt itself, it's been given that classic sort of neck out dirtied wash over the top to bring out all the creases and the detail. And it's made it look old, worn and battered. You can even see here where the shirt hasn't been buttoned up around his cuffs. And uh, his hands with his really long 
fingernails and to be honest his hands are huge his hands are absolutely huge though that does make sense Things in terms of the figure, I can't remember. Did the actor wear gloves or was it his hand literally painted? I think it was gloves, wasn't it? I don't know. That's so no, I can't remember if it was or wasn't. The same goes with the trousers as well. Again, being uh, dirty, particularly around the crotch area. May maybe Jason's made a mess of himself. Although not round the back, the back is remarkably clean. But again, we're getting this nice detailing of sort of Jason going going through the woods, killing people, so obviously he's going to be dirtied up. Same goes for the shoes as well, which again have that dirty look, that sort of a mud effect on them to make them look dirty. And also we've got the little buckles on them as well, just to bring out that extra level of detail. Speaking of one accessories, we've got the machete, which is covered Apart from the very, very tip is covered in blood. So if we take it out, it's got sort of that, rather than a standard sort of machete handle, it's got more of a kitchen knife sort of handle to it. But again, it's been well detailed. Unfortunately, the paint apps have sort of bled in a bit uh, on the handle, but the rest of it looks remarkably good as well. And as mentioned before, you can pose him sliding down the knife flat the machete and yeah this does look great so you can recreate the end of friday the 13th part four where jason slides down his own machete and the fact that you can actually do this is really good now this egg without the machete ink you can sort of make out a massive gap in his head for the machete to go in so if you are going to use this head then yeah display it with the machete in it otherwise it will look a bit odd in terms of articulation it's your scad necker affair so the head is on a ball joint so it can nod up and down move left to right the shoulders are on the ball joint so they can do 360 and about 45 degrees out to the side, they are slightly hindered by the clothing. 90 degree bend at the elbow, which is also on a ball joint, so again, allows for more movement. Again, though, hindered by the clothes. Wrists are on a slight ball joint, so they can pivot back and forth and do 360s, and the hands are also removable. We've got a bit of an ab crunch here, so he can lean down or lean back slightly and go from side to side as well legs again on a ball joint however are again restricted by the crotch joint nine degree bend on the knees which are again on ball joints so for allow for a variety of poses and the feet are on a slight ball joint this is mostly for basically just giving him a bit more stability you don't really tend to move the feet for any other reason by the way, now that's done, let's take a look at some of the accessories he comes with, shall we? Now, while my brother was getting these accessories out, he pulled the tape off to uh, get this kitchen knife out, and it pulled the paint off. If you actually look on the tape, you can see the paint has literally just been ripped off, which is annoying. And it is annoying. Like, necker figures, come on. Your figures look excellent, but the quality control is a bit random with the terms of actual paint quality and sometimes the build quality. But this, come on, this is just taking the piss, this. I mean, I'll look at it and it does look excellent. I mean, the blood splatter looks absolutely amazing. The handle is a bit basic, but they have kept the little hole uh, in the sort of chopping meat. Uh, sort of knife but that is just a piss take that we've also got the axe here and the top of the axe looks pretty well so it is pretty simple unfortunately for some reason there's a bit of a paint bleed and a bit of silver paint has got on the handle somehow and it just i don't know it doesn't ruin it but again it's just an annoying thing with necker figures now the top of it you can just about see 
there the actual wooden handle poking through the wood though does look a little bit weak i don't know if that yellow yellow piece there is a paint bleed or it's meant to bring out the sort of wooded look of it but it just looks like plastic to be honest it doesn't really have that sort of wooden look that i know NECA figures can have because the sculpt is completely smooth maybe if it had a bit of texturing or a bit of line detailing to make it look a bit more like wood but unfortunately it does just look like plastic unfortunately turning over to a really good accessory it's the pamela Voorhees grieve now if you remember uh in my michael myers from halloween 2018 review uh, I said the Grave Scroll could have used a bit of texturing, and this one actually does have a nice sort of texture to it. And also around the edges and that, it's made to look a bit uh, old and worn, but this is also, this text is also embossed into the sculpt, so it actually uh, is nice. But the nicest thing about it is it feels like stone. It feels like actual stone. It has a nice sort of texturing to it where it's slightly bumpy in that it's impossible to show this on camera but really nicely done with the green screen to make it first of all look but also feel like it's actually stone uh the base is just basic but other than that it does look absolutely excellent and a really nice accessory to include with this so here we have uh jason's Hacksaw, and as you can see, it's already bloodied. Uh, the blood on this one does look a bit more basic, though. It is just a basic red. Compare that to the knife, which uh, had more of a splatter look to it. If we just compare the blood effects on the two of them, this one is just a basic red, and uh, this section is a basic black. I mean, it does look really nice, and the sculpting is spot on. So, to be honest, yeah, it's a nice enough accessory, and I do like the fact that we've got the little teeth on there, but also the little, I'm assuming that's a bolt hole for, you know, the actual blade of the knife, but yeah, it looks really good and really nice, so, while it's not the best accessory here, it is a pretty solid one. Ah, uh, pop the champagne, anyone? So, here we have a corkscrew. With a nice little bit of blood on it, and with this one, although it's a basic red, it does work a lot better. It is rather shiny, actually. It's got a glossy finish, but yeah, other than that, it is just a corkscrew, but the detail on it is fantastic. You can see all the little uh, pieces, the little screw and that going down there as well. I was thinking that this was a bit large, but when you compare it to Jason's hand, it doesn't look uh, too bad, actually, though... I don't know, I think it is a slightly little bit too big. But I'll be honest, um, I'd rather be slightly too big than too small. But yeah, this is actually a really nice accessory. And the paint apps are solid on it as well. Which, you know, is surprising compared to the others. Yeah, nice tight paint app. So yeah, weirdly it's the corkscrew that has the night nice heating also i like the fact that the tip of it is rubberized so the screw part will not actually snap off well it seems like jason has been nicking michael myers knife again but uh yeah it's just the standard sort of kitchen blade thing uh not a lot to say other than the splatter detail on it is the same as the other knife the butcher knife slightly different but you can see that there is sort of like the different layers on that on it so yeah as well as the blood effect does work a lot better on this one and again the knife detailing of the little blade and that going through um three mile bits yeah so nice sharp paint taps on it and a very solid accessory and a really good knife and also you could it's not exactly the same but you could uh, if we get a jason mask It's not quite the same as the poster, though. Yeah. <laughs> so let's finally get on to the other head. Now, this is the head he is actually packaged with. Now, with this one, it is pretty much the same head. However, take a look at the mask, first of all. 
you can see that um, the reg sections here haven't been sort of blemished off like on this one. So there is that difference. But also it is uh, slightly less dirty. It does look a bit cleaner also. The blood marks aren't as deep as they are on this one. But other than that, the mask itself is pretty identical. And if we take the mask off, again, same sort of DC underneath. But we'll take a look at the head. Here's Jason's, uh, I was going to say more normal looking head, but it still doesn't look normal. You can see he's still got the blunge ring to his temple there. And he is still looking pretty zombified, though less so than this one. We just take that mask off and compare the two of them. You can see this one is jaws is more hanging open. Whereas here you can make out sort of both of his eyes. As you can see the detailing is pretty similar. It's just mising the blunger on the side of the head. But other than that the heads are very similar. They're both excellent. Got excellent sculpts and excellent detailing to them. This one is nice if you're going to pose it with the machete going through it. But if you just wanted a uh, Jason without the mask on then... This is probably the head to go kill because obviously it doesn't have the massive gap in the side of the head. Looking excellent as ever. And if we just go on to changing the heads, it is very easy. Unlike, see, with the Chucky Sinks, this is a newer Necker figure. You can actually have a look at his neck there. But as you can see, they're using the peg joint rather than the ball joint, so it means it's easier. There we go. It just pops on like that. And then we can put his mask on. And there you go. And I do like that. Uh, you know, depending on what angle you have it. It does look like the eyes are blacked out. But if you go up into it. You can actually see his eyes. Poking through like that as well. So that is really nice. And it's nice that both masks are removable so you can actually have a nice look at Jason on the inside. Turning to his final accessory he does come with an extra hand but this is basically the same as the other it's just made for gripping different accessories. So anyway let's go on to my conclusion for this. To quickly go through the hands pop off in much the same way as any other and uh, these ones since they're slightly rubberized and aren't rock solid it's actually pretty easy to do but anyway my conclusion for this figure for this chasing figure well as i've said with other NECA figures in the past it is absolutely excellent looking at the detail of it it just looks absolutely amazing and does offer a wide range of posability however again quality control rears its ugly head now with this one, it wasn't so much the build quality, but uh, more so the paint. Yes, the paint, and I just noticed also, it's on the handle as well. The paint is far too thin. It needs to be a lot thick, thicker, even if they put like a clear coating over it or something like that. They need to put another coating of something on there or something to keep it from basically coming off with the tape that it's included within the box. And just to note, my brother had never removed this knife uh, before. But yeah, I do like it and I do see why people love them. And I do myself. But it does reiterate the fact that these are not toys, these are collector's items. In fact, on the box it says 17 and up. However... They should still have a standard of build quality and also paint quality. And to be honest, I think Nick are going slightly shy of this. Now, normally, I wouldn't be as harsh on this as I am. But the thing is, these are 30 fucking quid. So, yeah, my standards are pretty high when it comes to these. Because, well, they're charging an absolutely... You know, some people would say outrageous price. I mean, for me, I think it is fair, especially for what you're getting. But 
yeah, I mean, my brother paid um, £20 for this, which is still, you know, a fair bit of money for one figure. But it is highly detailed and highly articulated, and with the amount of accessories come, I can easily recommend it. All I will say is, this is for collectors only, obviously. But I would, I could, I can see, you know, NECA are improving. I mean, this uses, they did improve, for example, the head joint, especially compared to the earlier ones that uses the ball joint. So I can see that they are improving with that in that regard. But other than that, they still need some improvements to do, but yeah, other than that, I do highly recommend this figure. Anyway, let me know what you think about this figure if you have it. And uh, let me know in the comments below if there's any other NECA figures you'd like me to review next. By the way, that does it for this view, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.